He shook hands kindly, but looked as if something did not please him. When they got into the hall, Joe asked Glory if she had said anything amiss. He shook his head. No, it was me. He doesn't like to hear me play. Why not? I'll tell you some day. John is going home with you, as I can't. No need of that. I'm not a young lady, and it's only a step. Take care of yourself, won't you? Yes, but you will come again, I hope. If you promise to come and see us after you are well. I will. Good night, Lori. Good night, Joe. Good night. When all the afternoon's adventures had been told, the family felt inclined to go visiting in a body, for each found something very attractive in a big house on the other side of the hedge. Mrs. March wanted to talk of her father with the old man who had not forgotten him. Meg longed to walk in a conservatory. Beth signed for the grand piano, and Amy was eager to see the fine pictures and statues. Mother, why didn't Mr. Lawrence like to have Laurie play? asked Joe, who was an often inquiring disposition. I'm not sure, but I think it was because his son, Laurie's father, married an Italian lady, a musician which displeased the old man, who was very proud. The lady was good and lovely and accomplished, but he did not like her and never saw his son after he married. They both died when Laurie was a little child, and then his grandfather took him home. I fancy the boy, who was born in Italy, is not very strong, and the old man is afraid of losing him, which makes him so careful. Laurie comes naturally by his love of music, for he is like his mother, and I dare say his grandfather fears that he may want to be a musician. At any rate, his skill reminds him of the woman he did not like, and so he glowered, as Joe said. Dear me, how romantic! exclaimed Meg. How silly! said Joe. Let him be a musician, if he wants to, and not plague his life out sending him to college when he hates to go. That's why he has such handsome black eyes and pretty manners, I suppose. Italians are always nice, said Meg, who was a little sentimental. What do you think about his eyes and manners? You never spoke to him hardly, cried Joe, who was not sentimental. I saw him at a party, and what you tell shows that he knows how to behave. That was a nice little speech about the medicine mother sent him. He meant blanc mange, I suppose. Ah, oh, how stupid you are, child. He meant you, of course. Did he? And Jo opened her eyes as if it had never occurred to her before. I never saw such a girl. You don't know a compliment when you get it, said Meg, with the air of a young lady who knew all about the matter. I think they are great nonsense, and I'll thank you not to be silly and spoil my fun. Laurie's a nice boy, and I like him, and I won't have any sentimental stuff about compliments and such rubbish. Well, I'll be good to him, because he hasn't got any mother, and he may come over and see us, mayn't he, Marmy? Yes, Joe, your little friend is very welcome, and I hope Meg will remember that children should be children as long as they can. I don't call myself a child, and I'm not in my teens yet, observed Amy. What do you say, Beth? I was thinking about our pilgrim's progress, answered Beth, who had not heard a word. How we got out of the slough and through the wicked gate by resolving to be good and up the steep hill by trying, and that maybe the house over there full of splendid things is going to be our palace beautiful. <laughs> we have to get by the lions first, said Joe, as if she rather liked the prospect.